The innovative work of George Washington Carver has had a far-reaching impact on our world today. And now his influence can even be felt in outer space. For the past 18 years, NASA engineers have been working with Tuskegee University scientists to find efficient ways to grow food in space. There will be lunar bases, Mars bases, sometime way out in the future. And even for long-term space flights, people have to eat. For humans and long-term space missions, it's, it's costing approximately about $10,000 per pound to lift a pound of payload. And if you're going to space, it is be very um, expensive to take soil with you since you want to go plant. Today, when the space station food supply is low, a new shipment is sent via an unmanned spacecraft. If the craft misses its mark, serious problems can occur. The hungry crew could be forced to return to Earth. Or worse, a multi-million dollar mission would have to be aborted. So plans are underway to grow enough food for the space station to be self-sufficient. The Tuskegee scientists began their work with two of George Washington Carver's favorite plants, the peanut and the sweet potato. Our job was to take Carver's two commodities he was most famous for and figure out how to grow them, first of all, with no soil. That was our first job. Now, isn't that a setup for Carver? I mean, wouldn't that be right down his alley? The Department of Agricultural Sciences at Tuskegee pursued a unique hydroponics-based growing system called nutrient film technique. It requires no soil and relies only on water and a mixture of growing agents. And, um, and the nutrient solution flows continuously over the roots as the plants grow. The tiny roots form a fibrous carpet or soil-less bed for the plants. After two or three weeks, the potato starts to change color and bulk up. As part of the NASA program, the university also built growth chambers to produce basil and carrots in the same way. We can control how much light they get, what time they get it, the temperature. And not only just one temperature, we can actually ramp the temperature up just like nature does it. The Tuskegee scientists tested their growing system for several years. When they were sure that it would work in a space environment, they shared their findings with NASA. And when the NASA folks came from Kennedy Space Center to see it, they could not believe it, but uh, there it was. So that's why I'm saying it took some really, I would say Carver Rice, a brilliant young faculty and students who just stayed at it. Today, a new crop of carvers in training is sprouting up in San Antonio, Texas. And if it would have had real shallow roots way up here and that's it, do you think it'd be able to tap way down and get some water? The Carver Academy is dedicated to keeping the spirit of George Washington Carver fresh in the minds of today's youth. The school was founded by former NBA superstar David Robinson. It started more because of, I grew up um, kind of with a teacher's heart and always wanted to teach, always loved teaching and, uh, and you know, since I became a basketball player, <laughs> teaching was pretty much out of the question, but, but I've always loved inspiring and, and, uh, and stirring the heart. The school emphasizes the same hands-on learning techniques that Carver practiced in his career. And the teachers also try to instill in the children a curiosity about the world around them. You know, nature speaks to us every hour. If you would just listen. We're so tech-oriented. We, we know everybody wants to play with the latest gadgets and see what, you know, science is coming up with. Well, the most incredible things we have are right there in nature. They're right in front of our faces. They're the plants that grow right in front of us. And, and the kids have access to mo the most remarkable resources every single day. It's overflowing. The Carver Academy is perhaps the best tribute to the scientist who was constantly honored during his lifetime. He accepted every award with his signature humility. I am not sure that I am worthy of this splendid citation, but I 
I wish to say also that I thank you from the depths of my heart. He just refused to give himself credit for any of this. He gives the credit to God. On January 5th, 1943, at the age of 78, Carver died of natural causes in his room at Tuskegee Institute. Six months later, President Franklin Roosevelt established the George Washington Carver National Monument in Diamond, Missouri. It includes the 210-acre farm Carver explored as an orphaned slave child. Yes, he was born into slavery, and yes, he had great obstacles to overcome. But every obstacle that he overcame led him one step closer to becoming the great man that he was. He just made those steps. He just kept walking, and he walked right into history and right into our lives every day. George Washington Carver's work has been impacting and enhancing our culture for more than a century. For the next generation, determined to further his legacy, the challenge is daunting. We are standing on the shoulders of giants, and, and Carver is one of those giants before us, you know. And, and, and we are to, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. What we do is we stand on what that foundation that's already been laid is, and, and, and that's a great foundation. Carver's built some blocks for us, but, you know, we have to continue and take that tradition further.